dog, you gotta see the light. Cause if you want success, it come with sacrifice. Even when they tell yo, yo, you no yo, what up, what up, what up, what up? You keep going Welcome to Complex you. Current, to the new panel here. Mama, we self made it. My name is Everett Taylor. I'm a serial entrepreneur and CEO of ET Enterprises. I got two amazing individuals with me today. Um, I want to bring up the first one. Uh, you know him from Chicago, entrepreneur, fashion designer, Chicago legend, Joe Fresh Goods. So, for sure. Next up that we got to the stage, I've been listening to this man since like old selection radio. Man, I've been on him for a while, man. I'm really glad to have him here today. Uh, this man is from St. Louis. He's a rapper, songwriter, producer, and now fashion designer. You can check out his hoodies here today at Complex Con. I want to bring up my man Smino. All right, fellas, so a lot of people in here already know who you guys are. I mean, by a round of applause, how many of you guys know who these fellas are right now? But for, for the select few that don't know who you are, um, give them a little bit about your background, who you are. I'll start with you first, Joe. Um, I'm Joe Fresh Goods from the west side of Chicago, born and raised. Yeah, 290 shit. Um, <laughs> but yeah, entrepreneur, uh, owner of Fat Tiger Workshops, have a few brands. Uh, yeah. Smino, what about you, brother? It's me now. Yeah. My name is Smino. I'm from uh, St. Louis, Missouri. Anybody know what St. Louis is? Yeah. Up here. I'm from St. Louis, Missouri, man. Uh, north side. I rap. I sing. You know, a bunch of different things, but yeah, that's me. Okay. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Well, glad to have you fellas here today. Um, so, you know, one of the things that I get asked a lot as an as a entrepreneur is a lot of people see the success on social media, they see the glamour, they see the glitz, they see all the good days and all that, but a lot of people don't realize what it takes to really start your business and get that off the ground, right? How did you really get started? Um, so I started making uh, t-shirts in high school. Um, it was like a hobby at first. I never really knew I wanted to do this for a living. Um, you know, a way to get extra money on the side. You know, I, I didn't know if any of my friends were gonna like my stuff, but for the most part, it was just a fun hobby at first. Um, I think I made my first T-shirt, like I said, sophomore year of high school, and um, sold my first one for 20 bucks. And I was like, wow, you know, it cost me $6 to make this. Right. I sold it for 20 bucks. It wasn't a big profit margin, but it was like, for a 14 year old, it was like, wow, you know, so. That was the first time I realized like, oh, I just made something for this and sold it for this and it wasn't drugs. So um, that was pretty cool. That was like the first moment I like that aha moment. That's what's up, man. That's what's up. For, so for you, Smino, you know, being in music, man, it's, it's crazy right now. Like, you know, so many more people trying to be artists. You know, there's so much more access to people doing music and things like that. How did you really find the money or the resources to really get your musical career off the ground? And now, even furthermore, with Zero Fatigue to get that product off the ground? Yeah, uh, for real. Any of y'all that's from Chicago, like I moved up here for uh, for college or whatever. I was real broke or whatever, but where my bro at? Right there. Uh, my manager, Classic, over there, Chris Classic. I don't know if any of y'all ever heard of Classic Studios, but um, yeah, I heard some woos. Yeah. <laughs> y'all can clap for Classic Studios, it's yeah, 100%. Yeah. 100%. But um, yeah, bro, Classic, man, I ain't gonna stunt, man. I had this issue where I ain't like taking help from nobody and he had to tell me like, man, like you ain't gonna get nowhere if you ain't, if you're not able to open up yourself to take help, like just push your pride to the side and take some help. And um, bro bought me my first plane flight I ever, plane ride I ever had to South by Southwest. We met up with my, who is now my other manager right now and, and they both just been kind of just investing their time and their money in me. Like, I remember he had maxed out a, maxed out a credit card. He was like, man, I maxed my shit out, bro. But shit, you know, we paid that back and then something, but like, it's just really like, you know what I'm saying, big bro just investing in me, man. Like having somebody like him just was already stable and securing who they was already to kind of mentor me. I ain't never had that, so shit, that helped me. Yeah, that's what's up, that's what's up. Shout out to that. A lot of us, we don't have that person, you know. 
a lot of us don't have that person that truly believes in us. A lot of times we, we have our dreams and our aspirations and it'd be the homies and, and family, even your girl hating on you sometimes. So it's always dope to have somebody that's really behind you in your corner. Um, so for your business, Joe, um, you know, when did your brand really start to make a profit? So a lot of us, you know, we're trying to be entrepreneurs, we're trying to make money and things like that, and we keep catching L's and L's and more L's. So when was it that your brand really started to make a profit? And what's like the largest revenue stream? Because a lot of people, you know, might try to put you in a box with fashion, but like you do so many things as an entrepreneur. So what is like the largest revenue stream for you? Um, man, the word collaboration nowadays means a lot. Like sometimes a lot of these corporations and these companies or whatever, uh, they, they want to pay for our cool. No, we like kind of decide what's cool, like our culture. So, you know, some, as of right now, the partnerships I have with these the companies, that's like the largest now. But overall, it's still making clothes. Yeah. I think everything I do now, um, the DJing and, and other stuff I get paid to do, is because I make clothes. Right. You know, so, um, but clothing right now, that's like the largest revenue stream for me. Yeah, that's what's up. I know for me as a serial entrepreneur, you know, I don't really raise money for venture capital. I, you know, I'll get a company acquired or, you know, I'll turn profit on one of my companies and I use that money to start other brands and start other companies and start other projects. And so, yeah, that's a, that's a dope way to do it. So for you, Smino, you got a lot of artists out here that's, you know, struggling creatives, man, like, you know, really trying to just, you know, make it and, and you know, Dave Chappelle has this quote that I always love, and he talks about how he spoke to his father about, you know, wanting to be a comedian. And his father was a teacher, and he said, you know, what's success? And he said, if I can make the same salary as you, you know, as a teacher, as a comedian, that's successful for me. So I think a lot of, you know, artists out here, you know, they just want to be able to break into a point where they can actually, like, live off of that so they don't have to go back to the streets and hustle and they don't have to go work that BS job, you know what I'm saying? So where did that moment really happen for you or what changes did you make to really start turning a profit from your music? Um, for me, I honestly, like, shit, I'm a rapper. The first time I got some money is when I signed, I signed a little distribution deal. Uh, like, I still own all my masters, all my publishing and all that shit, but I did a little distro deal because, you know, shit, niggas was broke. So, uh, yeah, that was my first time, but I blew all that shit. I ain't gonna lie. I blew every dime of that shit. Remember that? I blew, <laughs> <laughs> I blew that shit in a week. I looked up like, ha, ha, <laughs> damn. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? I learned from that. And then um, I start learning. I, I, I mean, a lot of us never really, just shit, you take it even a step further. A lot of us never really had real lessons on financial literacy. Yeah. You dig? So, like, a lot of us to get money and, like, not know what the fuck to do with it. I can say shit like, what the fuck? Right. right. Oh, God, I'm an yeah. entrepreneur. <laughs> nah, but, uh, yeah, like, you know, a lot of people don't know what to do with it, and I didn't. And um, after a while, I started getting the hang of things. Like, I was lucky enough to get, like, I actually had fans. Like, people, like, took to the music, you know? So I was able to just start, like, all right, let's figure out how we can make merch. Let's figure out how we can, like, you know what I'm saying, make, uh, just cool little events to where we can bring in extra money and shit like that. But yeah, yeah I came, I came out of motherfucking white label money, man. No cap, no <laughs> yeah, bullshit. You, yeah, you made a great point about financial literacy. I sold my first company when I was 21 years old. Mm -hmm. I think within a year or so, I had blew through all of that money. You know, it was the most money I had ever seen in my life. And I learned a lot about taxes. I learned a lot about all that stuff. Um, and so, Joe, you know, you told me how you, you blew through money. Joe, was there like a moment for you that really ta taught you like, man, I really got to get my finances together and learn more about financial literacy? Yeah, yeah. Um, I think my largest project to date was the Thank You Obama project. Um, it was dope. It, it was the first time a whole bunch of money came in at once. Um, and beyond it being funny, I mean, like, beyond it being cool and, like, amazing, it was kind of scary because it's just like, now what? You know, I got all this money sitting in my account. Um, I know I got to pay taxes on it. I don't know how. I don't know. I can Google account, but how do I trust that person? Um, it was, it was kind of scary. Like, I, I, I look at money different because I didn't grow up with money like that as well. So, and, um, you know, I don't know when I'm probably going to touch that again, you know? So I, when I got that, I'm like, wow, you know? So just one of those things where I just tried to 
hurry up, figure out the tax thing, break everybody off of what they got to have, pay my production, and just like, you, it's like learning math, okay? You got, you, you made these clothes, you made this money, but then you got to ship out these people, shipping might cost, you might make 300,000, but shipping might cost 40,000, then production might cost 60,000, then you got to pay 40,000 in taxes, and you, you know, people don't really look at it like that, right. but when you break everything down, it's like, wow, well, okay, you know, and it's still profit, but, um, you know, it's a lot before you can take home and go ahead and like, you know, just spurge on yourself. So me having a business and like, you know, wanting to grow, you know, I took a large amount of money I made from that Obama collection. That's when I opened up the store we have now, which is like the biggest store we have, like right, right now in Chicago, uh, Fat Tiger Workshop. So we just expanded. So I just, you know, kind of put that back into the business. That's what's up, man. Um, Smino, for you, you know, for the people that want to be artists or creatives out there, do you have like any gems or any advice in terms of like, you know, how to handle handle your money? Man, just try not to. I, with me, I don't really tell people what to do, but like with me, it's like I try not to um, dabble too much into personal life with my when, when I get money off of music. And when I get money off of something I'm doing, I'm like, shit, all right, let me put that back into some music, something that got pertaining to that. Because it's like, that's all I'm getting for that, if that makes sense. It's like, you're not getting money to damn, I don't know, if, you, if, if you're making money off of music and you're paying your bills, like, shit, that's respected. That's, you know, that's respectable. A lot of people, a lot of artists got to start off like that. But like, after a while, like, you know, even putting a little bit to the side just to go get a video shot or put a little bit to the side just to go get some merch made so you can make some more money off of your money. That shit just go a long way, bro, straight up. For sure. Um, really, it's all about investing in yourself. I mean, yeah. one of the things that I've personally learned is like, we spend a lot of money on bullshit. You know what I mean? It's, it's, you know, we love, you know, sneakers, we love fashion, we love nice shit, but at the end of the day, if you got a dream, if you got something that you really, really want to make happen, like what is that? How, how much of a priority is that to you? You know what I'm saying? We waste so much time on social media, buying shit that, that we don't really need. If it's like, yo, if you want to be an artist, or, you know, if you want to get into fashion, like how can you save that money and put that money together? Sometimes you got to humble yourself. Like, yo, you might have to hop in that fucking Uber pool. You know what I'm saying? Like you might have to <laughs> take that bus. You might have to do different things. You might not be able to cop that new release, you know what I'm saying? To do what you gotta do to make those things happen. So um, invest in yourself for sure. So one thing I do wanna talk about um, is criticism. And uh, I, I was on this panel uh, a couple of days ago with the Obama Foundation and we were talking about haters, right? And it's, it's like, I said haters are like germs. They're everywhere, they multiply, you can't really get rid of them. Um, and so, you know, Smino for yourself, you know, being in music, Music is one of those things where everybody has an opinion, you know, people are criticizing things and, and all that. How do you deal with criticism in your career? Um, I mean, I love it. I love criticism. I mean, you listening, like, you can't criticize what you ain't paying attention to. So it's like, I look at it like you paying attention. You just waiting on me to do something you like. If you don't like it, and if you do like it, it's like I appreciate it, but I don't even let that get me too hyped because I'm like, I don't want to feel like I'm too stuck on what y'all like, and I'm doing what y'all like. I'm doing what I like at all times. So it's like, that's how I look at criticism, you feel me? Yeah, for sure. What about you, Joe? How do you deal with it? I'm trash at it. <laughs> I mean, because for me, I still think I'm just a regular dude that make t-shirts every now and then. So even like seeing my face, <laughs> shit's just weird. You know what I'm saying? Um, I found myself like searching my name online and like, Joe Fresh Goods, I'm like, what the hell are you, you know? It's still weird to me, because, you know, I'm not, I don't look at myself how people might, you know, but, um, you know, my grandma told me, it, long as people talking, that's what it's all about, you know what I mean? It's just like, it seems like the bigger I get, the more people have to say, good and bad, you know? Right. Um, but it's all about, like, just um, focus on the good, you know? Right. I think sometimes people focus on all the negative, and it's just like, it, it eats them away. Um, while you got all the fans that's really supporting you. Right. You know, I really believe in that one fan a day system, and that's how I've been kind of growing the business the past, like, 15 years, you know, so. But, yeah, sometimes it gets to me. I just, like, late night, let me search Joe Fresh Goods on Twitter, Twitter and see what pops up. It's just yeah. like, so it, it, it gets tough, you know what I'm saying, sometimes, but um, just try to focus on the people that support me. Yeah, and it's crazy, because none of them people who be talking shit will say that to your face. Yeah, and what's crazy is <laughs> I'll call somebody out on a tweet, and then be like, oh, I just wanted you to respond to me. I'm like, damn, motherfucker. Like, 
I just wasted this uh, DM. I just fucking sent you a mad ass DM and you just said, I'm a big fan. I just, that's all they want, man. And I'm like, so it's just like, sometimes it's just simply just trolling, you know what I mean? Yeah, so sure. the more that's been happening, I'm like, okay, you know, just ignore it. Yeah, absolutely. You know, one thing that you talked about is, you know, looking through social media and seeing those things and, and, and how criticism can kind of play into things. And, you know, what a lot of people don't realize is that, you know, artists, people who are successful, we're humans just like them. You know what I mean? Some of those things that people say or yada, 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 I don't care how thick your skin is, sometimes that can get to you in X, Y, Z. Um, and I want to kind of talk about like the rough times, you know what I mean? Like the things that people don't see on social media. Like people see, you know, when you drop that new merch, people see when you drop that new single and the success and the roaring crowds, but like they don't get to see the other side to this shit. You know, they don't get to see like the down days. They don't get to see, you know, when you're struggling and things like that. So can you guys kind of talk and kind of humanize yourself a little bit more and talk about like what you guys do, you know, during your rough days, what do you do to, you know, you know, self-care for yourself, take care of yourself, you know, when you're not on the grind. Smino? Me? Yeah. Uh, uh, I smoke a lot of weed, bro. For sure. Yeah. <laughs> no secret. I smoke a bunch of weed. Uh, kind of keep me from overthinking anything, you know what I'm saying? But it ain't that deep. Um, I don't know. Honestly, I'm kind of bad at the whole self-care thing. I wish I could come in here and be deep as hell. Like, man, you got to write it down and give it to the moon and shit. <laughs> like, um, I'm not, I'm not good at that shit, bro. Like, I, I move so much, and I'm, I had this thing in my head where it was just like, you only as good as your last good thing you did, so don't get too hyped. So like, anytime I feel down, I guess you know, I try to talk to some people I love, try to talk to my mama, try to feel some love. That's about it. Ain't other than that, like you know, real love. Like, then this whole like, just you know, getting validation and people liking your stuff on the internet, that's kind of like sickening in a way. Like, it's not real love, you know? Like, you got to make sure you stay tapped into that love you really getting. Don't let that shit get too much to your, to your skull because it'll just really have you thinking that love for real. You know what I'm saying? But, yeah, self-care shit, shit, I smoke weed, bro. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do to, to kind of stay fo focused with all the noise around you? Um, I mean, I more so just don't look at what everybody else got going on. Yeah. I gauge myself out what I did, because it's like, shit, I'm just trying to be better than me. And that's an easier way to compete than to just be like, I'm trying to be better than all these thousands of niggas that's rapping and shit. Yeah. Like, somebody always gonna have something else that somebody like that they don't like about you or something. You know what I'm saying? Vice versa. So I just do me, you know, try to outdo me, if that makes sense. That's what's up. Joe, what about yourself? How you stay focused, bro? Um, just seeing it's a bigger picture, you know? Like, the things that I get to do for a living is like, I wouldn't, I didn't even know it was a job, you know what I'm saying? So, like, I, I found myself having like a little mental breakdown leading up to ComplexCon, because I'm like, yo, I got a panel, a panel DJ gig, I got an activation in my store, I got four booths, five booths we doing build outs for, and interviewing staff, and I'm just like, yo, it, it gets tough sometimes, you know, but like every time I find myself wanting to complain, I think about how grateful I am for the opportunity. A lot of people probably want to be in my shoes and do what I do, so. And then even doing, being accomplished kind and getting all the love from people, like, it, 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 makes, it makes everything, like, this is why you did this, you know? So, uh, you know, we, the we, <laughs> you know, we artists at the end of the day, about what we do, so, you know, it, it, stuff does eat us away, because we all, I, we make money off what comes out of our head, you know what I'm saying? So. It, uh, you know, that's why mental health is very important. Yeah. To make sure we're sane or whatever like that, but talking to your family, you know what I'm saying? Just sometimes you need quiet, you know, time by yourself, you know, but uh, it gets rough sometimes, you know, being in front of people and just having people judge you and shit. I hate when people have been lying outside my booth all day. I just hate when I look at, look at people and like, it just, it's tough, you know what I'm saying? But I'm just, I have a good heart though, so it's just like, you know, I, I really appreciate when people support like that, you know what I'm saying? It makes everything, all the hard work worth it. Yeah, man. A lot of people, a lot of people don't realize, man. Like, you know, when you when you work in a regular nine to five and things like that, when you fuck up, like, don't nobody know about that. You know, nobody sees that. But like, when you're in that public spotlight, yo, everyone sees the fuck ups. Everyone sees the mistakes. You know, everyone sees when you know things don't go right. And there's just like an extra, you know, layer of pressure there. Um, but one thing that you you mentioned was, you know. Uh, this this uh, almost responsibility to inspire people just because of your platform. Um, but I'll reverse that a little bit. Like, who and what has inspired you in your career? 
Oh man, I'm a fan of like black owned businesses, you know, like it's, it's tough. It's really tough owning a business, you know, like having employees like, you know, payroll and all that stuff. Cause again, we wasn't really taught this. I wanted to get into this, you know, making t-shirts. So to have a store and a popping area in Chicago and have employees and people that depend on you, you know, it, it, it gets kind of tough, but like, you know, I, I started off um, interning, and, you know, we're local for, uh, working for local stores in Chicago. Worked at Leaders, which is a legendary store in Chicago, and um, just seeing how the owner moved and, like, um, you know, just em employing people of color. And, uh, you know, he, he was one of the first stores to open up, like, this type of store he had downtown. It was just like, it was, it showed it was possible. Like, what people don't understand, like, I thought it was so hard. Like, my first store that I opened up in 2012, I opened it up, like, 800 bucks. Um, you know, I found the little storefront in Logan Square. Um, yeah, eight hundred dollars, and I just, it was, I got the key. You know, and it was just like, order some vinyl, go print some clothes, and we opened. We opened on Black Friday, so it was just like, I, I thought that was hard, but it wasn't really hard. Eight hundred dollars is, you know, not a lot of money. You know, so, um, you know. That's what's up, man. What about you, Spino? Like in terms of you know you being from the Lou, was there anybody in the Lou that really inspired you, or was there anybody outside of the Lou that really inspired your career? Most of the people from St. Louis that inspired me was like my family, like you know what I'm saying. Uh, obviously Nelly, bro, but that's more like a he taught he taught niggas how to rip, you know what I'm saying, the city. But um, my family, bro, my family's some musicians and musically inclined people, so I was kind of just you know just real big on, you know, I'm trying to fill in them shoes, but at the same time, trying to just, you know, be myself at the, and, and on the side talking, but yeah, it was a big family influence first for me. That's what's up, man. Um, so all of you guys are, are, are independent, um, but working with larger companies. So Smino, um, how did you ensure your deal with Interscope uh, still offered you that creative freedom and independence? That shit crazy. Y'all want, want to know the real story? <laughs> all right, it's a fucking crazy story. It's a real crazy story. It's so raw, low key. All right, so it was this white nigga. <laughs> all right, look, I'ma tell you, I'ma sit up, bro. So it's this white nigga, right? This white nigga be drunk, and dude was taking niggas out to eat, to dinner, and shit like that, like trying to woo wop us, tell us what we could do for us. Ha ha, shit, cool. So um, we like, all right, for sure, you know, let's let's chop it up, let's see what we can do. He kind of done a basically put a blank page in front of us, like, what y'all want? Make your own deal, huh? Bat nigga, like, huh, we huh, put that shit together. And um, he ran with it, you know what I'm saying? I owned all of my shit, bruh, like, short term. Like, I'm about to be out of my deal right now. Like, and it's, it's my last album. I'm fucking young, you know what I'm saying? Like, anyway, this nigga, he goes, like, Interscope was trying to sign me, but I ain't signed the Interscope because I'm like, I wasn't with all that term shit. It's too much terms. You know what I'm saying? Plus, I ain't gonna lie, I was inspired by Chicago. It's a lot of independent people here. So I'm like, I don't wanna be the only not independent nigga. So, um, <laughs> I'm just saying, 100. But anyway, so the nigga, the white drunk nigga, he go and behind our back. I told y'all, Interscope was trying to sign me and I wasn't with the shit, so they trying to sign his whole company. Now, but I'm the only thing his company has, pretty much. You know what I'm saying? So they signed his whole company behind our back. We didn't know nothing about that, right? So now I'm signed to Interscope. We're doing work with Interscope on something like, we, we mad at the nigga like, damn, right? <laughs> yeah. But the blessing was the drunk ass nigga, he was so drunk and so, so much of a tweak that everybody kind of just left his company and wasn't really working with him no more. You know what I'm saying? And I'm, I'm proud to say, you know what I'm saying? They, Interscope took the same fucking deal that I had with him and took it on. So I got a major label deal. Well, indie label deal with a major label, but I'm like the only nigga in the world like that with this deal. You know what I'm saying? But it's on some low key shit. You know what I mean? That's why I never be like, well, honey, there ain't ain't nobody business. It's like shit. They, I'm just getting, you know, me and these white people doing some business. I ain't signed. <laughs> For sure. Yeah, straight up. I think it's really important to to know your worth. I mean, like if if. If you don't know your worth and then you're not willing to ask for what you want, yeah. people are gonna bullshit you. I'ma keep it a buck too. Like, in all of this shit, I learned like how to do business. Cause it's not a bad, like on some real shit, a lot of people from Chicago got this thing and it's not a bad thing to, to be independent. But it's also not a bad thing to do business with people, G. Like you could do business with motherfuckers and keep your dignity. And that's what we did. And Interscope, they cool with that. The fact that they even let me keep that shit going. 
Now, that was just something I respected. You know, they respected me as an artist. I respect them as a company now because of it. And now I know how to do business, you feel me? Yeah, so. for sure, man. Um, so, Joe, for you, um, you on the other end, too, are working with larger companies. You were talking about that earlier, how, you know, that brings in a lot of bread and things like that. You're working with companies like Adidas. Like, how do you maintain your independence and your creative freedom working with these larger companies? And what I've learned there is if a company is going to offer, I, you know, I'm pretty sure you dealt with this, too, where a company like, okay, I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you 50K for something, all right? And you say, no, I want this. And they say, okay, cool. It's like, what the hell? Yeah. Like, why you lowball me like that? You know what I'm saying? It's, yeah, yeah. You know, right. if a company is so quick to offer you something, then they, they you can negotiate, you know? Yeah. It's power negotiation, you know? And I think sometimes um, we get blinded by opportunity and, like, you know, what looks good, but, like, paperwork is real. It's so real. And I'm learning that, like, the hard way, you know? Um, sometimes, like, working with big companies is, is, is good, but you got to... You know, it's social media stuff you got to put in. Like, we, with me designing, like, working with big companies like McDonald's, you know, like, I might give them a, a, a shirt or a hat or a jacket, and none of it gets passed by legal. Like, same thing dealing with the hat. So it's just, like, it's, it's tough, you know what I'm saying? Like, dealing with, dealing with contracts on that level and then just, like, learning your worth when they give you an opportunity, you know? They give you a contract with some numbers on it or whatever, like, 100% of the time, you can give them back your number. You know what I'm saying? You never, ever, ever take the first deal. Right. Um, never, ever. Like, that's, so that's the first, that's like what I've learned over the past two years is if a company is, if a company is, is pitching, you come in a room, you gotta, you see your face on the wall and it's a pitch deck, they your bitch, you know? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's like, you, you can, if, well, honey. you know, like, they want you, you know, so. Facts. Yeah, so, you know, for me, I had to learn that throughout my career as well, um, I learned this lesson. If someone says yes to your number too quick, then you probably should have asked for more money. You know, I had situations where I didn't really understand my self-worth or how much I really brought to the table. And I would throw a number out there thinking like, oh, this number crazy. And then they'd be like, yeah, that's great. We can start, you know, and I'm like, man, like I, I'm definitely worth a lot more. So that's, that's a great lesson to know. Um, so, Smino, uh, for the audience here, you have any, like, practical tips um, that you can give or some gems that you can give to the audience that you want to give them before we get out of here? Some gems? Yeah. Some gems. Uh, my favorite thing to tell people that ask me for advice is to stop taking so much advice. <laughs> Straight up. Because it's just like, bro, you know what the fuck you want to do, right? And can't nobody really tell you what your vision is, right? So it's kind of like, you need to find more people that kind of fuck with it, like, and work with them. So like, I don't know, that's really my advice, just don't really take too much advice, straight up. Word, word. I think there's like a Drake line or something like that. For real? So, yeah, that's a Drake yeah, line? Yeah. 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 yeah, it is, it is, it is. <laughs> How you gonna come and say, I'm a rapper, bro? How you gonna just come and say, that's a Drake line? <laughs> Joe, what about you? What is it, what, what's uh, something tactical? Um, I mean, going back to what Spino said earlier about not being afraid to ask for help, I think sometimes as creators, we, like, we, want, we want to see what's in our mind as, that we put out to the world. Like, we want to, from start to finish, we want to be able to control it. Uh, the moment you be, you're able to release that, release that and ask for help, you, you know, it, it helps out the big picture, you know? Like, uh, you just need help. You know what I'm saying? Like, nobody can do nothing by themselves. It's like, everything is a, like a, a full-fledged team effort, you know what I'm saying? So. Um, just not being able to, f being afraid to ask for help from people. Yeah. When you're growing sure. a business, or when you, your business start popping. Yeah. Gotta hire people. There's just no way around it. I had to piggyback real shit. I heard some shit Rick Rubin said, like, you don't get no extra credit for doing everything by yourself. Like, nobody's gonna know you did it alone. Or Kerr. So it's just like, shit, get the team popping. Yeah. Straight up. So you definitely can't do it by yourself. Um, success is not a one-man sport. Um, I just want to say thank you. Joe, Smino, thank you for being here. Thank you guys for being here tonight. Um, enjoy the rest of the Complex Con and we out. Thank you.